Now for the main event, the birthday cake. I need two and a quarter sticks of butter. I need three cups of sugar. And while they're creaming, I'm gonna get the rest of the ingredients together. Okay, the butter and sugar are really well creamed. They're light and fluffy. It gets really a light yellow color. I'm just gonna scrape down the bowl to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Okay. And then with the mixer on low, I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time. Just make sure they get really well incorporated. It's gonna make a huge cake, but everybody's gonna get some to take home. Next, the zest of one lemon. It's a white cake, but this little bit of lemon really gives it lots of flavor. One and a half teaspoons of good vanilla. And one cup of sour cream. This is what keeps it really moist. It's an eight ounce container. Mm, this already smells good. Okay, now for the dry ingredients. First thing you need is three cups of flour. Any all-purpose flour, I use unbleached flour, whatever you have. Cornstarch, a third of a cup. This basically approximates cake flour, makes it nice and light. A teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of salt. Just sift that all together. Okay, on very low speed, I'm just gonna add the dry ingredients to the wet ones and mix it just until it's blended. So this is a half sheet pan, it's 12 by 18 and about one and a quarter inches deep. You can get them in any cookware stores. Just pour the batter in. And you won't believe the decorations I found for them. Nice and smooth. Into the oven, 25 to 30 minutes, 350 degrees, and it's gonna be a knockout cake. So I'm gonna do a chocolate icing for my white cake. First thing I need is 24 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Mmm, already smells good. One and a half cups of heavy cream. And just let the chocolate melt over double boiler, simmering water. But I don't want it to get too hot, because otherwise the chocolate will separate. Not pretty. I use chocolate chips, but if you want to use bars of chocolate, that's fine too. Just me sweet chocolate. And actually, the more you stir it, the shinier it gets. Makes a really nice frosting. Okay, so off the heat, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of corn syrup. It actually keeps the frosting spreadable. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla. I'm actually gonna take it off the double boiler so it cools down pretty fast. Cause I'm gonna have to let it cool a little bit before I add the butter to make the buttercream. Ooh, that's a lot of chocolate, but it's a lot of cake too. Half a stick of room temperature butter. I'm just gonna beat this together until it's light and fluffy and it's nice buttercream. Okay, that should do it. Nice and thick. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, now I'm just gonna spread it on the cake. Okay, just spread it out evenly. Perfect. I always have to make sure the icing's good. I will. Can I taste this first? <laughs> really? Oh, Ina. <laughs> this is really so good. So tonight we're having a birthday celebration, and of course, you have to have birthday cake. Everybody loves carrot cake for birthday cake, but I thought I'm gonna really turn up the volume. Instead of just plain cream cheese frosting, I'm gonna add mascarpone to it. And in the carrot cake itself, I'm putting in crystallized ginger to give it great heat. It's gonna be a really fabulous carrot cake. Okay, so I have a pound of carrots. Now the batter. I need two cups of sugar.
one and a third cups of vegetable oil, three eggs, I use extra large eggs for everything. And room temperature eggs are really important, so they mix into the batter well. That goes in. And one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Okay, I'm just gonna mix this for two minutes until the batter is light yellow in color and quite thick. Okay, now the dry ingredients. So it's just two cups of flour, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. And then they just get sifted together, just to be sure there aren't any lumps. Okay, now I'm gonna put the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. Just turn this on low and just very slowly mix them in. If you put them in too fast, the flour can get all clumped together. Nobody wants clumped flour in their cake. This actually smells good already. The cinnamon and vanilla, two of my favorite flavors. Okay, now for the good stuff. So I'm gonna to mix together the pound of carrots that I grated. Carrot cake's really easy to make and I love it. Cup of chopped walnuts. Cup of raisins. If you love raisins, you can add more. And then a quarter of a cup of crystallized ginger. It's also in the frosting, but it's nice if it's in the cake too. Crystallized ginger is really hot and sweet at the same time. And I just thought with carrots and raisins and walnuts, I thought it would be just great in it. I think Jane's gonna love this cake. Okay, that should be about a quarter of a cup. If you like it hotter, you can always add more. Then I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon of flour and that's just gonna keep it from sinking to the bottom of the cake. You don't want all the carrots and raisins in the bottom. You want them sort of suspended in the cake batter. Okay, all mixed together. Now it's time to put it into the batter. Just clean the beater off. There's a lot of batter on the beater. And just to make sure it's really well mixed, I always scrape the bottom of the bowl. Okay, now I'm gonna add all these ingredients. It's like more carrots than there is batter, which is why it's such a good carrot cake. And just fold it in with the spatula until it's really well mixed. Oh my goodness, does this look good? Okay, I've greased and floured two nine inch pans. And I actually lined them also with parchment paper, because as I've often said, there's no point in making a cake if you can't get it out of the pan. I'm just gonna pour this into the two pans. You wanna divide the batter evenly so the cakes cook exactly the same amount of time. It's all one cake at the end, but I wanna be able to frost the middle. So it looks like there's a little more in this one, so I'm just gonna transfer it. If you wanna be exact, you can always use a little scale. Okay into the oven, 400 degrees for 10 minutes, then I'm gonna lower the temperature to 350 and bake them for 30 to 35 minutes until the toothpick comes out clean. The cakes have cooled and I've made the frosting. Let me show you how I make it. First, 12 ounces of room temperature mascarpone with four ounces of room temperature cream cheese, two cups of sifted confectioner sugar, two tablespoons of heavy cream, half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and I just beat it for about a minute until it's light and fluffy. Then a third of a cup of minced crystallized ginger, not the kind in syrup, but the dry kind, just like in the batter. And a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt, and just beat it for about 30 seconds. This cake is a little different. What I've done is, instead of frosting the whole thing, sometimes it kind of makes a mess, I'm gonna frost the middle and the top, and then you can really see the carrot cake through the whole thing. And it certainly is easier. Because I want everybody to know that there's ginger in it, I have a little extra crystallized ginger to just sprinkle on the top. And it's gonna to be perfect for the birthday dinner tonight. When it comes to brownies, I didn't think there was any room for improvement until I discovered skillet brownies. For the dry mixture, I've got a quarter of a cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna sift them together. And here I have the chocolate mixture. It's so good, which I've prepared and completely cooled. 
I added one stick of unsalted butter, that's a quarter of a pound, to a bowl set over a pan of simmering water. Added four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, one and a half ounces of unsweetened chocolate, and melted everything together. Then I set it aside for 15 minutes just to allow it to cool slightly. In a separate bowl, I added two extra large eggs, two teaspoons of instant coffee granules. It's one of those magic things that really brings out the chocolate flavor. One and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. A half a cup plus one tablespoon of sugar. It's an unusual amount, but it gives just the right amount of sweetness. Then I stirred everything together. Just stir it, don't beat it. You don't want extra air in it. The last step is to stir the chocolate mixture into the egg mixture and allow it to cool to room temperature. So that's the two mixtures. Now I'm just gonna put the flour into the chocolate mixture. As you can see, there's very little flour in this, which is what makes them such gooey, chocolatey brownies. Mm. This looks fantastic. So the last thing is, because these are actually triple chocolate, there are chocolate chips in it as well. So I've got half a cup of chocolate chips. This is why you want to make sure the batter is cool, because you don't want these chocolate chips to melt into the batter. You want them to stay whole chocolate chips. I just put a tablespoon of flour into the chocolate chips. What it does is keep them from sinking in the batter. Just toss them together. Okay, and right into the mixture. Can't imagine how chocolatey this smells. That little hint of coffee really makes a difference. Okay, time to put it into the skillets. So I've got a tray with skillets on it. These are three and a half inch cast iron skillets. You can buy them online and they're just great. Individual portions. How fabulous is that? And I'm just gonna pour this right in. Generally, when you have a brownie, you have to wait for it to cool. So you can cut it in squares and then eat it. And when it's in the skillet, I realize you don't have to wait for it to cool. It can be served hot right out of the oven. Okay, wanna get every bit. Okay, these are gonna bake 350 degrees for 25 minutes and they're gonna be so hot and gooey and just delicious. Oh my God, this is just amazing. Molten hot chocolate. Who wouldn't want that for dessert? Well, talk about saving the best for last. Just a girl and her brownie. Wow. Chocolate ganache cake is such a Barefoot Contessa classic. We made it into wedding cakes for 600 people. We've made it into individual ganache cakes. But what everybody remembers most is the chocolate ganache cupcakes with a little candied violin on top. So I thought it'd be really fun to do for the Barefoot reunion. So to make it, I start with a quarter of a pound of butter, room temperature, very important, and a cup of sugar. It's got a secret ingredient I'll show you. I'm gonna beat those together until they're light and fluffy. Four extra large eggs. At low speed, add the eggs one at a time until they're well mixed in. Now comes the secret ingredient, chocolate syrup. I know it sounds odd in a cake, but it's really good. 16 ounce can. This recipe originally comes from my friend Devin Fredericks, who owned Loaves and Fishes when she was like 25 years old. She's an amazing cook. One tablespoon of good vanilla extract. And the last thing is a cup of flour. Just sprinkle it in slowly so it doesn't get lumpy. And this is the point you want to mix in the flour just enough but don't overbeat it. Otherwise it'll make a tough cake. That looks really good. It smells so chocolatey. So this is enough for one eight or nine inch cake. But I'm gonna make 12 cupcakes out of it. So I'm gonna use a, a muffin pan very inexpensive muffin pan for the, from the hardware store, and an ice cream scoop, which gives you perfect cupcakes every time. It's 
much easier to measure. You want them almost filled. They don't rise too much. And then later, after they cool, I'm going to do shiny chocolate glaze. It's double chocolate, double trouble. So I'm going to bake these at 325 for about 25 to 30 minutes. Everybody likes a nice chocolate cake, but it's the icing that everybody loves. For my chocolate cake, I'm going to do a chocolate ganache icing, which is a shiny chocolate glaze. It's really easy to make. So in a double boiler, which is basically just a heat-proof bowl over simmering water, I'm going to put a half a cup of heavy cream, half a pound of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and because I always like coffee and chocolate, it gives it a real depth of flavor, I'm going to add a tablespoon of instant coffee granules. So I'm just going to let that sit over simmering water until it just melts. Don't want to burn it. Stir it around a little. So the ganache is still a little bit warm, so it's easy to pour. Isn't it amazing how shiny it is? Just gorgeous. And you can really taste that little bit of coffee in it. It really brings out the chocolate flavor. Can't imagine the big vats of ganache we used to make for chocolate wedding cakes. It was such an unusual wedding cake, and I'd cover it in fresh violets and white roses. So beautiful. Big shiny chocolate wedding cake. I have wonderful candied violets that we used to use that I put on each one. Edible violets. These are sometimes a little hard to find, but if you find a bakery supply store or a specialty food store or a cake decorating store, something like that. They are oh, chocolate ganache oh. cupcakes. Oh. Remember these? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With violets. Okay. With violets. Beautiful. Oh. If I have one go-to chocolate cake, this is it. It's chocolate ganache cake. And it starts with a quarter of a pound of unsalted butter, and it has to be at room temperature. One cup of sugar. This cake is amazing because you can make it in almost any size, and it's completely foolproof. I'm just going to cream these together until the butter's light and fluffy, and the sugar is mixed in. So first what I've done is I've buttered an eight inch round pan and it's got a nice high two inch side. And then the question is, how do you get a square piece of parchment paper into a round pan? So take the piece of paper and do it in half and then fold it in half again. Fold it in half again, just as many times as you can, just like that. And then you put the tip right where the middle of the pan is and cut off inside the pan like that. And if it's too big, you can just refold it and recut it. And now what I want to do is butter the paper and the pan and flour the whole thing. So I just use the paper the butter came out of. Easy as can be. A Little bit of flour. And just flour the whole pan, the sides and everything. Just make sure you get the whole thing. The butter and sugar is perfectly mixed. It's kind of light and fluffy, and the butter is pale yellow. So now the next thing I want to add is four eggs. Just I'm going to do it on low speed. And I add one egg at a time, just until it's incorporated. The next ingredient in this cake is the secret ingredient, chocolate syrup. It's a whole 16 ounce can. I'm just going to pour it right in. Next is a tablespoon of vanilla. It's a lot of vanilla for an eight inch cake, but it really makes it taste great. Okay, and the last ingredient is flour. I'm gonna turn it on low. One cup of all-purpose flour. And at this point, I don't wanna overmix it, so I'm just gonna put it in slowly. If you dump it in, you'll end up with lumps, but if you put it in slowly with the mixer on low speed, you'll end up with a delicious cake every time, just until it's mixed in. Mm, I love the smell of this. Okay, I think this is perfectly mixed. Okay, I wanna make sure there are no lumps, no flour. Perfect. I'm just gonna pour it right into the pan. This cake isn't gonna rise very much, so don't worry about it filling the pan. It doesn't have any leavening in it. I'm gonna bake this cake 325 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes, just until a cake tester comes out clean. And in the meantime, I've actually made not one, but two cakes. I bet you're wondering why. I'm gonna tell you in a second. And I've made chocolate ganache to pour all over the cakes. Look how gorgeous it is. It's so rich and wonderful. Let me tell you how I made it. 
I poured a cup of heavy cream into a bowl set over a pan of simmering water. I added a pound of semi-sweet chocolate chips, two teaspoons of instant coffee granules to bring out the flavor of the chocolate, and stirred it occasionally while it melted together. In fact, the more you stir it, the shinier it gets. Now you're gonna find out the reason why I made two cakes. Lighty Hoik, who does social media with me, we did a video recently for Instagram of how to do a chevron pattern on a chocolate cake. You made it look very easy, so <laughs> I'm nervous. It was so much fun. So I'm turning the tables on Lighty, and I'm gonna teach her how to do the chevron pattern. So I combined one and three quarters cups of confectioner sugar and about three tablespoons of water. You wanna adjust it a little bit just so you get a really thick pouring okay. consistency. Okay, okay, so now you take a little knife and you use the back of the knife, not, okay. the, not the cutting edge, the back, and you slide it right across, kind of lightly. One more. Yay! <laughs> First thing I want to make for Antonia and Donna is a sour cream coffee cake. It's a really moist sour cream cake with a streusel in the middle. I'm going to start with one and a half sticks of butter. One and a half cups of sugar. And I'm gonna cream that together until it's light and fluffy. And then I'm gonna start on the dry ingredients. Okay, so the first ingredient is cake flour. Cake flour I found is a little lighter and fluffier, so that's what I use. Two and a half cups of cake flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder. Makes it nice and fluffy. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of salt. Sift that together. I'm gonna add three eggs, some good vanilla, really important in this. One and a half teaspoons. and one and a quarter cups of sour cream. This is what makes it really moist. One and... Ugh, got it all over the mixer too. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it on low, lowest speed, and just slowly add all the dry ingredients, just with your hand and beat it just until they're really mixed. Now for the streusel, the good part. So I'm gonna just combine it in a bowl, a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar, half a cup of flour. This is the crumbly part of the, and the flavorful part. One and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt three tablespoons of butter, which I'm gonna just crumble into the streusel. Clean hands, best tools. Sour cream. I don't know how traditional walnuts are for a streusel cake, but I'm gonna add some because I think it turns up the flavor. So about three quarters of a cup of chopped walnuts. You can just buy them already chopped. But if you don't like walnuts, just leave them out. It's still delicious. And just crumble all of that together. Okay, now I'm gonna put the cake together. But I've buttered and floured this. What I'm gonna do is put half the batter in the bottom. I'm gonna take three quarters of the streusel and just spread it evenly on the top of the batter. So there's gonna be streusel in the middle of this cake as well as on the top. I'm gonna to take the rest of the batter, put it on top. Just sort of place it on top and then I'll smooth it out later. And then more streusel on top. And it's amazing how much this gets really moist and light. So into the oven, 350 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes, and we're gonna have a really good cake. So my philosophy is too much is never enough. So I'm gonna add a maple drizzle to this to make it even better, and it's really easy. A half a cup of confectioner sugar. And 
two tablespoons of maple syrup. I really like good maple syrup. Not the stuff that says syrup-like or syrup-flavored or, it's really maple syrup. Okay, that's perfect. Even better. Just want it to drizzle down the side a little bit. This is actually not about being perfect. It's about being a little messy. When Jeffrey was in college, I used to send a big shoebox filled with homemade brownies. It's sort of the culinary equivalent of a low-cut dress. I guess it worked. <laughs> I've been married to him for almost 40 years. So I thought I'd make him brownies, but this time with peanut butter swirl in them. The first thing I need is a pound of butter and a pound of chocolate. It's a lot of butter and chocolate, but it's a lot of brownies. And then a pound of chocolate chips. They're semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then because I don't want them too sweet, I'm going to put in six ounces of bitter chocolate. It's actually unsweetened chocolate. I'm just going to chop it up. Try and keep your fingers out of the way. OK, right into the butter and semi-sweet chocolate. And just melt that until it just melts. You don't want to burn the chocolate. OK, I'm just going to stir this up. And just over simmering water. If the water boils, it gets too hot and it'll burn the chocolate. So I'm just going to leave that over simmering water while I get the eggs together. I need six eggs. I use extra large eggs. It's really important to use room temperature eggs. It just makes the batter work better. This makes 20 huge brownies. Jeffrey's really romantic. A few years ago for our anniversary, he gave me a box of brownies to remind me of the brownies that I used to send him in college. I thought it was so sweet. I wonder if he'll get it about all the things I'm going to cook for him today. OK, the chocolate's just melted. I'm going to turn it off. Actually, I want to let it cool, because I don't want to try to pour the hot chocolate mixture right into the eggs. OK, while that cools, I'm going to add some things to the eggs. And I'm going to add three tablespoons of instant coffee powder. It sounds like an odd thing to put in brownies, but it makes the chocolate taste so chocolatey. Two tablespoons of good vanilla extract. OK, the next thing is two and a quarter cups of sugar. An extra quarter. I'm going to whisk these together, but I'm not going to whip it. I don't want to get any air in it. I want them to stay pretty dense. All the coffee and vanilla, chocolate. OK. The next thing I want to do is put the flour and baking powder together. So I need a cup of flour. A tablespoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of kosher salt. I sift these together just to make sure it's really smooth when it goes into the mixture. OK, so that's the dry ingredients. Now I just want to see if the chocolate's cool enough so that it doesn't scramble the eggs. And since I'm putting chocolate chips in later, I don't want it to melt the chocolate chips. Perfect. Good. OK, I'm just going to pour it right into the eggs and coffee and vanilla. Oof, this is a big bowl of chocolate. Now the flour and baking powder, just slowly add it in. See, that's not a lot of flour for that amount of batter. These brownies are so good, they're really chocolatey. OK, that's mixed. So I'm going to take a quarter of a cup of flour and mix it with two cups of chocolate chips. And what it does is keep the chocolate chips from sinking to the bottom of the batter. Just mix them together. Just put them right in. Sometimes I do these brownies with nuts. Sometimes I do them with salted peanuts are good. Great flavor combination. OK, buttered and flour to half sheet pan. I'm just going to pour this right on. Just smooth it out. All right. Take three quarters of a cup of 
peanut butter. You can use smooth peanut butter or chunky peanut butter, whatever you like, and do big dollops of it right on top. And then I'm gonna swirl it in with a knife. I'll show you how. I think it's really important that it actually, when you bite into a brownie, you can taste the peanut butter. It doesn't just look like peanut butter, but it actually tastes like peanut butter. Okay. Take a knife and just swirl this through. So every bite's gonna have a little bit of peanut butter, a chocolate chip, chocolate, and then all those flavors of coffee and vanilla. Who could resist that? Okay, these are gonna bake 350 degrees for 30 minutes, and then I developed this very strange technique, but it works. Halfway through the baking, I'm gonna pick up the pan and wrap it on the shelf, and it releases all the air between the brownies and the pan. These are gonna smell great. Brownies smell great. I'm surprised Jeffrey hasn't come in to see what smells so good. So they bake for exactly 30 minutes. Mm. You can see the swirl of peanut butter. Yeah. That's gonna be perfect with a steak sandwich. These don't look bad. I don't know, a steak sandwich, brownies for lunch. Jeffrey might think I'm up to something. I hope he figures out what I'm doing. And one brownie for him. If I leave all the brownies out, I'll eat them all. That's not a good idea. I'm gonna make chocolate banana cream pie. It's classic comfort food. It's got a graham cracker crust, chocolate pudding, bananas, and whipped cream on top. I mean, a duh, who wouldn't love that? So it starts with a really rich chocolate pudding. So I need three quarters of a cup of sugar, five extra large egg yolks. This is one time they don't have to be room temperature. A third of a cup of cornstarch. We want a really rich, thick chocolate pudding. And a teaspoon of salt. I know it sounds odd to put salt in something sweet, but it really brings out the chocolate flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna mix these together at low speed, just until they're combined. The next thing I need is four cups of scalded milk, which means it's just below the simmering point. You'll see little bubbles right around the edge, and that's when it's perfect. And since it's really hard to pour milk from a pot into a mixer, and it's hot milk, I'm gonna pour it into a measuring cup that has a spout, it's much easier. So I'm just gonna take this and pour it very slowly into the eggs. What I don't wanna do is scramble the eggs. So you want them to warm up really slowly. It's really like making a custard. A really rich, deep chocolate custard. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and pour it back into the pan and cook it for a few minutes just until it's really thick. And then I'm gonna add lots of chocolate. So pour it back into the pan. Same pan, you don't have to clean the pan out. Okay, I'm just gonna cook this at a medium-low heat for about five minutes, just until it's really thick. I'll see you on the other side. This looks like it's perfect. You can see it's sort of the consistency of warm pudding. Now I'm gonna turn off the heat, and I'm gonna add lots of chocolate, seven ounces of bittersweet chocolate. Just pour it in, it's just gonna melt right into it. Next is two tablespoons of unsalted butter. I've just diced it up so it melts in. Just give it a little extra richness. And now because I love coffee and chocolate together, I'm gonna add two things that have coffee flavor. The first one is a tablespoon of coffee liqueur. Just gives it real depth of flavor. And we want lots of flavor. And the second one, is instant coffee or espresso, whichever one you like. Whatever you have in the pantry, it doesn't really matter. It smells so good. All the chocolate and the coffee together, it's just fantastic. Next thing is to pour it into the crust. And this is my foolproof graham cracker crust. Let me tell you how I made it. I put 10 to 12 graham crackers in the food processor and ground them up. Transferred the crumbs to a bowl, added a quarter of a cup of sugar, and three quarters of a stick of melted butter. Stirred the mixture together, poured it into an 11 inch false bottom fluted pie tin. Pressed it gently with a measuring cup into the corners and across the base, making sure the sides and bottom are an even thickness. Then baked the crust at 350 degrees for 10 minutes, then set it aside to cool completely. It's really important to let the crust cool completely so the warm pudding doesn't soak into the crust. So, here comes the moment. 
just gonna pour it in and hopefully it's just the right amount. Oh, how good does this look? And how good does it smell? And you want it right up to the top, just smooth it out. So I'm just gonna add bananas and whipped cream to this. Now this is my kind of fruit dessert. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a little plastic wrap, I wanna chill this, but I don't want it to form a skin. So I'm gonna take a piece of plastic wrap and just put it directly on the pudding. And that'll keep it nice and creamy. So just smooth this out, and I'm gonna chill it for six hours, and then I'm gonna put bananas and whipped cream on top. But I happen to have one already chilled in the fridge. This is the chilled pie, and I made some whipped cream. Look how dark and delicious and chocolatey this looks. Wow, I love it. And I've made whipped cream, it's three ingredients, really easy. I poured a cup of cold, heavy cream into an electric mixer. It has to be cold because you can't whip warm cream. Then added one tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, turned the mixer to medium high, and whisked it until it just made firm peaks. I've sliced some bananas, two or three depending on how big they are, and I'm gonna put them in concentric circles right on top of the tart. Now that looks pretty good already, but I'm gonna make it even better. So I'm gonna put a layer of whipped cream on top. This is a really earthy dessert. It's very comfort food. This isn't the time to pipe whipped cream. This is the time to just slather it on. And what I wanna do is just push it right to the edge, but I still want you to see the bananas and the chocolate. I think it looks so much better that way. I think we need a little more whipped cream though. Just kind of pile it up. Now, is this the ultimate comfort food or what? Maybe a little extra decoration like shaved chocolate oh. on the top? I've used bittersweet chocolate in the tart, but if I use milk chocolate, if you have a little bit, it's actually easier to shave and make curls. Otherwise, it tends to just end up kind of ground on top. Look how good that looks. Okay, let's see if I'm gonna put it on a cake stand. So, I've got a nice cake stand. And let's see if I can get it out of the tart shell. So this is a false bottom tart shell. So what you do is just take it off and slide it right onto the cake stand. Wow, I don't know that this is everybody's idea of a make-ahead fruit dessert, but you can make a lot of it ahead and it's got fruit in it, right? Works for me. <laughs> for my picnic by the pond, I'm making all kinds of portable food, including lemon bars for dessert. So I'm gonna start with two sticks of butter, half a cup of sugar. Why do all my recipes start with two sticks of butter? It's for a party though. <laughs> I'm just gonna cream those together. And then with the mixer on low, add two cups of flour. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Great. This is really a shortbread dough. It's so much easier to make. It doesn't require a rolling pin. I'm just gonna pat it right into the pan. Okay. Put it right into a nine by 12 pan. Don't even have to grease the pan because there's butter in the dough. I'm just gonna flour my hands and press this out. I'm gonna chill it for about 15 minutes, and then later on I'm gonna make a wonderful lemon curd filling and pour it on top of the baked dough, and then cut them out in squares for my party. Okay, just chill for 15 minutes. For my picnic by the pond, I'm making lots of portable food, including lemon bars for dessert. I've got the crust all baked and cooled, and now I'm making the filling. So I've got six eggs, three cups of sugar. I'm just gonna whisk it all together. These are really lemony lemon bars. I've got lots of lemon juice and lots of zest in them, and great flavor. Okay, next thing is two tablespoons of grated lemon zest, which I've already got right there cup of fresh lemon juice. 
Mm, you can already smell the sharpness of the citrusy lemon. Mm. And the last thing is one cup of flour. Just put the flour in slowly so it doesn't get lumpy. And when this is done, I'm going to pour it onto the crust, put it in the oven, 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until it sets. And when they're cool, I'm going to cut them in big squares and dust them with confectioner sugar. Okay. Just pour it right in. thing is to serve lemon bars. I'm just going to dust them with a little bit of powdered sugar. These are so lemony. I can't wait for dessert. And just, I've cut 12 of them in this pan. It's always the first one that's hard to get out. Got it. Okay, I'm going to wrap it in parchment paper. Off to the pond to meet my friends. I thought I'd surprise Michael and Jim with a cake for their anniversary party. So it's one and three quarters a cup of flour. I'm gonna sift all the dry ingredients together. Two cups of sugar. I'm gonna sift them right into the bowl, mixing bowl. And since it's chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream, it's got three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, dark chocolate cocoa powder. Mm, smells so good. So chocolatey. Okay, one teaspoon of baking powder. Two teaspoons of baking soda. It helps it rise. One teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to sift all these together. So the method of this cake is to sift all the dry ingredients together <laughs> in a cloud of chocolate. And then I'm going to slowly mix the wet ingredients into it. Okay, that's the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna mix them on the mixer until they're combined. Okay, now for the wet ingredients. The first thing is a cup of buttermilk. I always shake it, because it does settle. Make sure it's well mixed. So I'm gonna do it in a measuring cup. That'll be easier to pour into the cake batter. So I need one cup of buttermilk, half a cup of vegetable oil, Two eggs. Just beat the eggs a little bit. Right into the wet ingredients. I use extra large eggs. One teaspoon of good vanilla. Really important when you're doing chocolate. Okay, I'm just gonna combine these. And then with the mixer on low, I'm just gonna put it into the dry mixture. And then I have a secret ingredient. Or I should say Michael's grandmother had a secret ingredient. This recipe calls for a cup of hot brewed coffee. And I always think coffee is really important for chocolate. It makes it taste really chocolatey, and that's exactly what this does. Right into the mixture. I've got two eight inch cake pans. I lined them with parchment paper, butter and flour. pressure's on. It has to be good because Michael knows exactly what it is. He actually served this cake to me once at dinner and I just begged him for the recipe. I didn't have to bake very hard. I'll make sure they're pretty equal size. Okay, into the oven, 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes and then I'm going to cover it with the easiest, most delicious buttercream you've ever seen. So I'll chop up six ounces of really good semi-sweet chocolate. I'm just going to melt the chocolate in a bowl that I've set over simmering water. I'm 
In the meantime, I'm going to start the rest of the buttercream. So I need two sticks of butter, half a pound, at room temperature. I'm just going to beat that on medium speed. Okay, the next thing I need is one extra large egg yolk and a teaspoon of good vanilla extract. Okay, I think the chocolate's going to be ready by now. Let's see. Take this off the heat and just let the chocolate cool while I turn the cakes out. Just add it to the butter and vanilla. So I've got two teaspoons of hot water. I'm just gonna put in a tablespoon of instant coffee powder, which is a very intense coffee. Just melt this together and pour it into the buttercream. And I'm just gonna whip it for a minute. Make sure it's really well blended. I'm gonna turn it on low and add all this gorgeous chocolate. The chocolate's actually cooled now a little bit. You don't wanna pour hot chocolate into butter, otherwise the whole thing will melt. Mm. You can really smell the chocolate and the coffee together. A little hint of vanilla. And that's Michael's grandmother's chocolate buttercream. Icing a cake, just go over it very gently Start from the top and work your way down the sides. Okay, so now I've got buttercream on all sides of the cake. I'm just gonna go up and down the sides. And good news about an old fashioned cake is it's supposed to be a little messy. And then I'm just gonna smooth the top, just sort of big swirls. I can't wait for dessert.